Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful evening here in sunny Florida to meet with Adam LZ. We are at the LZ compound. I have never been before. I've never met Adam before, but today we're heading inside to meet him, to understand this place and to go for a look around. We're talking heading inside here to check out some of the cars from his collection. We're going to be heading around the compound for a bit of a tour with the sun out, the low sun. It is right at the end of the day to go and see some of the storage facilities and the other spaces that are all here at this place, which I've watched ever since its introduction about two years ago. What an unbelievable place. Anyway, that's not all, because later on, I think Adam's going to take me for a little lap around this place in the passenger seat of a drift car. Yes, you heard that correctly. Well, let's head straight on in, go say hello, and go check out the LZ compound here with Adam LZ. <laughs> Hey Adam, how are you doing? Welcome. Welcome to the LZ Compound. This is our shop. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It is amazing to be here. This is the most exciting place, I think, in all of YouTube, quite literally. I remember when you revealed the, the whole setup, it was like one of those wow moments. Yeah, a lot's changed and uh, it, it's weird. This is probably my favorite space, but the least amount has actually changed in this area because it was actually really nice when we got the place. And this so. was basically where you moved into and it's where now Currently you have some of the cars of your collection. Yep, so this used to be the previous owner who passed away. He had his, his pride and joy of his collection in here on display uh, and we converted it into the workshop because what they use as a workshop, which you'll see a little bit later, the floors were hammered and floors are expensive. So it was easier to just paint and put nice lighting in the showroom to make this into our shop. Well, it's a cool place and we might be coming back to that in just a moment. Yep, so uh, this is my buddy Sean. He's finishing up putting a passenger seat and seat belts in uh, because uh, I want to make sure that you're safe. That sounds good to and me. We can talk, we'll talk a little more about that, but that's like our, our newest project. It's a weird automatic car with a clutch pedal. That kind of sounds thing. all sorts of weird. I need that explained, but let's yeah, yeah. let's have a quick walk around of the cars then. Let's talk okay. about what you've got here. This this is a big deal. Yeah, so this is our, I don't want to say our craziest build, but it's my favorite car and it's probably the most exciting thing to drive like the idea with this is maximum fun for me and for the people watching and this is a na four rotor sequentially shifted uh very similar to the engine that would have come in the 787b it'll rev to 11,000 rpm it'll only make about 450 horsepower but what's funny about it is the uh, the power band i overlaid a dyno graph over a 991 gt3 it's almost identical like the way that it delivers power and the way that it delivers torque. Okay, so, interesting. To give you kind of an idea of what this feels like. And a flat six sounds good, but this is going to just sound yeah, yeah, yeah. unreal. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds rowdy. Um, but yeah, and then going through here, uh, some of the stuff we build, this we kind of did like a little engine bay restoration on. It's a good old skyline. We got a lot of those. Yeah, RB26, looking lovely. Yep, this is, yeah, so you know, you know you're- your I know a little bit. Yeah, you're like coming in, you're like, oh, I only know exotic stuff, but <laughs> you know, you know what you're looking at. Um, this is a, a CRX. This was really cheap, but it was just a car for us to toss around and have fun. So a lot of guests will do lap times. I'd, I'd stick you in the car and have you go do them, but it's getting dark and we're running out of time. But oh, well, next it's time. A, it's a lot of fun. I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is an NSX that we just finished up. It's about to get shipped out. It was a giveaway car, as was that one uh, to its new owner. This is probably my favorite car to drive. Do you know pounds or do you only know, um, what do you- I could do a bit kilograms? of both. So this car weighs a little over 2,600 pounds. Okay, that's makes, nothing. Uh, around 900 horsepower. <laughs> so it's, it's like 1,100 kilos, 1,150 kilos. And I run a 315 tire on it and it drifts okay. and basically does wheelies <laughs> the whole time. So- That's uh, some crazy power. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a handful, but it's, it's super simple car. It started out as a car that some dude crashed and asked me if I wanted to buy it and then it turned into this. Why not, hey? Yeah, Why not? you know. How do you choose which cars are here? Just stuff that you're working on or? Yeah, so mostly what's in the shop right now are the ongoing projects or the things that need a couple nuts and bolts. This car's got a broken transfer case. It used to be my favorite car I owned. This car also weighs 2,600 pounds, but it's all wheel drive and makes 550 horsepower. So it's, this is a monster <laughs> on track. I can imagine. It laps the GT3 RS. Yeah? Like embarrassingly. Okay, wow. Maybe not on the Nürburgring just because of aero, but on yeah. smaller tracks all day. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. This is lovely. Yeah, this car's actually not in here getting any work, but uh, the area where we keep all the other cars is really dusty. And okay. my buddy Trevor just cleaned it, so we were just keeping it in here so it doesn't get all dusty. Nice. The first car I ever drove in my life, albeit around a car park, was an E46 M3. So I hold them dear to my heart. It's a good car. It's not uh, the cleanest car in the world, but it's a good driver. It's got cool speed cloth interior, which is fairly rare. Yeah. Brembo big brakes, carbon plenum, sounds good. 
makes all the good noises. All around winning. Yeah. Then uh, this is this is my R32 GTR that's kind of undergoing some love right now, but another one of my favorites. Right yeah. There. This is another giveaway car that we're going to be building soon. I am doing a Mark IV Supra that's the same color, and I wanted to build a twin car. So we're, uh, we're using some of the setups and combos that we've found to work really well on other cars to inspire this one. That's really cool, actually, to make a matching pair. Yep. That's going to be great fun. Um, and this is all, this is like the, I mean, you've got a super cool lounge space upstairs. This I mean, is, how, how far are we going? Do you want me to show you that stuff? Can, can we go and have a yeah, look? Yeah, of course. Because this, I'm, I'm hugely envious of the space that you have up here because it's like, well, it's man cave, right? It's perfect. It's getting there, slowly but surely. The so more, The more space you have, the more stuff you fill it up with as well. Down there, that's kind of where we do a lot of like fabrication, metal grinding. Up there is part storage. And then over in here, uh, it looks like a lounge, like we would hang out and like do a lot of fun stuff up here. But if I'm being honest, most of the time spent up here is like leadership meetings um, and when I need to just get away and work on my computer. But when we have a lot of people in town, we'll hang up here and play pool and eat food. This is, I, I love this space. Like, like this is the space, the seating areas, huge couches and the view over the cars. Yeah, the glass the was the big thing for me because when I got the place, it was kind of set up like this, but the windows only went to here. So you couldn't really see much of the shop. And I was like, man, how cool would it be to be able to, you know, just be sitting down and just look out the window and just be like. <laughs> and that's actually why we didn't put lifts over on the other side because it looks so much cooler to just see the cars on the ground. It's quite the view. Yeah. It's a little messy right now, but. Uh, and of course, with the Ben Pack two posts in here as well. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I obsessed over the layout to get it right. And I'm really glad that I went with the lifts at an angle because it's so easy to pull in and out of all of them. So did you find with this and some of your other spaces that you can just constantly reiterate layouts of things? Uh, if you're as, I think you're as much of a perfectionist as I try and be. And you can just, yes. <laughs> or did you just kind of set your mind it's going to be like this and it's done? Well, the problem is like with lifts, you can't change your mind because then you got giant holes and you have to yeah. redo your floors. Yep. So it took me probably like three or four months just to commit to mount the lifts. Like we have the lift sitting here. I have the, an alignment rack, but I can't commit to where I want to put it. Same thing, I have a dyno, but I can't commit to where I want to put it. Yeah, because you can't move it. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> dynos I can move, but it's really expensive to do the wiring, but we just actually wound up doing that finally. After having a dyno for a year, we finally picked <laughs> this permanent home. That's cool. All right, let's head, head back down. What's going on over here? The cars are cool, but most people freak out over this. Uh, bolts and nuts got to set up with a giant array. So whenever we're working on a car, we don't need to run to a hardware store. We just pick it out of here. You've got everything. It saves so much money I can, and it and saves time. so much time. I can imagine it. The amount of time you're like, I just need one of these somethings. You don't have it. And you saw too, we're, we're very in the middle of nowhere. So it's like, to go anywhere, it's a 30 minute drive and then 30 minutes back. Yeah. So you lose an hour. And that, oh, yeah, those hours sure. add up real quick. So we and head this through. Over here uh, is obviously a paint bay. So yeah. where painting stuff happens. And then over here is kind of uh, like tire mounting area. Tires fuel station. and <laughs> More tires. Uh, and then we'll have the dynos actually set up here okay. before they were in the bay next door. And then in here we do a lot of our own uh, kind of printing. So any sort of like livery elements, oh, branding okay, so stuff, like, printed yeah, stickers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just got this equipment before we worked with other places and it just, you know, when you're in a pinch and you need stickers for the next show yeah. tomorrow and stuff like that. What a cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool setup. All right, now we hop on the golf cart. And we can so, go to the next building. Exciting stuff. There's so much going on. So I'm going to take you over next to my little uh, home garage is what I call it. And it's basically where I keep the cars that I drive the most. We'll hop on this one. Okay, but he's uh. swapping. Let me come around. Yeah, full disclosure, I, I gave him a ride earlier on the other golf cart and <laughs> I may have messed with the electronics with it and made it very hard to not throw your passenger off the side. <laughs> we prefer the comfortable one, but how amazing is it to have this space? Like, it's, it's beautiful, man. Like, uh, especially when I'm away and I come back to it and I feel like I have my own little like Disneyland. The biggest thing for us is like with a lot of the race car stuff, just being able to test a car here and having the space to not worry about someone calling the cops on you or being able to do what you need to do in a safe environment and not have to waste a bunch of time and money at a track is very, very helpful. So then when we go to the track, we're super prepared. You know what's gonna work and what's not. I mean, this is the amazing thing. You have some houses on site, you have all the garages on site. You've got the, <laughs> the full racetrack set up going around. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to have the barriers on a lot of the corners. This was the first one we started working on, but it looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, big time. I'm just like, <laughs> this is crazy. Right, 
Let's head in. This is more your style, right? This is more my style. Congrats on this. I know you've only Thank recently you. collected it. The Meissen Blau it's cool. GT3 Touring. I like it. The interior is what sold it for me. I, uh, I miss my GT3 a lot and I didn't want to get another car that felt the same. And I've never actually sat in a GT3 that doesn't have black interior, but it makes it feel like a different car. It's true. The kind of houndstooth interior against the bucket seats. This thing is just, it's really cool. Thank you. It's a really nice car. The, the GT3 RS is like holds a really special place in my heart. Like that was a car that was really my, my huge goal growing up. And I've always owned one. I had the purple or I had the orange one and then I traded it for the purple one. And then when the purple one uh, got in the car accident, it felt weird not having a GT car. And I had my Turbo S, which was a great car, but like, I feel like until I die, I just always need to own a GT car. There, yeah. There's something special. I think that's, you know, that's really cool. And congratulations on, you know, achieving that and having that kind of car in the collection because that's a mega thing. I know th that's obviously more my thing. You're, you're yeah, a yeah. lot more in the JDM and the drift world, but that's very, very nice. So what else do we have here? Yeah, so then this over here, this is my, my chaser. This car, my, my point of comparison for a benchmark for you is that this car would pull on my 992 Turbo S on the highway which is also tuned catless. So like it was a fast turbo S and this uh, stancy looking thing is faster. This would pull away from a 992 turbo S, yeah. which to many is like the fastest thing out there. Yeah, I mean, not from a stoplight. I would just be spinning at a stoplight, yeah. but anything over, let's say like 50 miles an hour. When you're already on the roll. Yeah, once it can <laughs> put the power down. That's cool. Yeah. And I remember also when you bought all your go-karts and things, yeah, they're yeah. all tucked That's in fun. over there. Definitely a lot of toys all over. Yeah, <laughs> but you've got the space too. That's one of the, the like coolest things about the compound to me is that when you've got the space like this, you can truly, you can play with it. You can do fun stuff. You can, you can put corners up. You yep. can build a racetrack. <laughs> all right, off to the next building. We'll go to the area where all the cars are stored. Yeah, that'll be amazing. You like my little graffiti on the wall? I do actually, I like it a lot. It's actually a, a fan of mine, his name is Armando, came by and kind of just like did that out of his head. Really? Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, Someone it's like amazing. Camouflages in the building. This is my favorite feature of the compound. We called the Nico Drop because there's a famous track in Japan called uh, Nico Circuit. And it has this little off cambered area yeah. that when you put your wheels in it, it picks up the front wheel because it load jacks the car. Okay. Super fun. Yeah, you'll, you you'll get to experience that in the, uh, the Supra. Okay. <laughs> I'll oh, give gosh. you a ride. <laughs> Have you been in like a proper drift car? I have actually been in a couple. I okay. went in the 300 kilometer an hour R35 record car. Cool. Do you remember when that was done? Well, mine will feel nothing like that. It, will, <laughs> it is not a proper drift car. I drove but a it will be fun. 350Z, 350Z cool. uh, for like a, a test day. Gosh, your merch stuff. This is cool. Yeah, so this is one of our two buildings that we use for uh, merchandise fulfillment. And uh, we got a pretty awesome team that works out of here. Ton of stuff on the shelf. We've experimented with the, you know, Buy it and then we'll, uh, you want a piece of candy? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we send these out with all orders. Uh, but um, no, we experimented with the whole, like you buy it and then we make it type stuff, but it's way better to have it on the shelf so we can instantly just send it right out. Definitely, I think it's super cool because as well as obviously filming videos here, you've also got Drift HQ here, you've got mm -hmm. a ton of other stuff here. There's just loads of things going on on site. And I mean, fair play for that because it takes a lot of time, effort and management to keep it all up and running. Uh, we got an amazing artist now. His name is Josh. He's actually from the UK. And uh, the level of detail that he can put into some of these designs, this uh, started kind of as a joke. I always <laughs> hate on the burble tunes. Yeah. Very topical. I love it. Yeah. He's so talented. Anti burble tune association. Yep. <laughs> Are you a burble cool. tune guy? I have a mixture. Yeah. The GT Black Series burbles away a fair bit. It's tough because a lot of new cars come with a burble and you can't get rid of them, right? Like yeah. the, the new Supras, I can't delete the burble. Yeah. I haven't figured out how. Yeah, no, no. I, I, so I had a, an A90 when, when it was new. Mm. Um, I had one of the A90 editions, the launch editions over in the UK. Um, I enjoyed it for, probably I had it for a year or so, but because mine was an A90, which was like the super limited version, yeah. it really put me off wanting to do anything with it. Really? Because they only made 90 of them. Uh, so in Europe, you hear you had, I think, one and a half thousand launch edition cars. Yeah, there's quite a bit. We had 90. <laughs> so even that's in, 90 in the whole of Europe. Even in stock form, like it's, I, I think here, I don't know how much they are in Europe. It's one of the best cars you can get for the money. I think they were more expensive comparatively in Europe. That, that would make sense. So just before we it's head off, this bay. is your wash bay area. Yep. That's awesome. I'm actually quite jealous of having a purpose-built wash bay 
area set up like that. Yeah, super it's, convenient. It's super nice. We head past all yeah. the other buildings. That's my girlfriend shopping there. She's working house where some of the guys stay. This is where the cars get prepped over there. And uh, yeah, it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> Not quite drifting around there. No, I mean, we could try with this, but <laughs> you'll probably end up out of the golf cart. <laughs> I'm gonna stay with sticking inside. So over here, we got some more workshops. So we've got like a little outdoor area that sometimes is nice when we're in a bind. This is uh, some of the cars that we rent out to people that are in town that wanna go drifting. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the employees will work on their cars in this building. And this is the Drift HQ shop over there. That, Hi guys. That is a how nice you doing? workshop. <laughs> I love how it looks with all the doors open. That is really cool. Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of cool cars and cool builds in there. We're giving you the condensed tour because we'd probably be here for two hours and I wouldn't be able to take you drifting if I, if I talked and about every single it's thing. It's gonna be dark in about half an hour as well. Yep. <laughs> lots of parts cars, lots of rollers, some random, you know, Craigslist, Facebook marketplace finds floating around. And a ginormous warehouse. Yeah, so this is the, the main building. And this one is cool because you'll see it exactly how it was when we got it. All we did was clean the floors. It was already outfitted with all the lifts, all the lights. So really, really, really nicely done building. Um, and this is where we store all the cars. We call this one the lift bay. So this building specifically is my personal collection. Um, most of the cooler cars are over at the, uh, the workshop, but this is... I was about to say, you're talking about most of the cooler cars and we're sitting next to this or standing next to this. It's funny because, you know, my definition of the cooler car is the one that we have more like work and time and energy into. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of done more like a restoration. So it, this isn't to the level of like power or enjoyment that I would want it but we'll probably end up rebuilding it at some point. Fair enough. It's still beautiful. Um, the fabric on it's amazing. Every nut and bolt on this car has been refinished. It's a good one. I never thought I'd own one of these cars. Believe it or not, I was, uh, I was bidding on an air-cooled Porsche because I wanted an investment car. Yeah. And uh, I almost won. It was, a, it was a pink slant nose, like original car, turbo. It was sick. I lost it, got frustrated, and I said, you know what, whatever. I'll buy an R34. They're 100 grand. That's ridiculous, but... I've, I've always wanted one. And then sure enough, I got it and prices tripled. So I was say, it turns out to have been a pretty good mood. Yeah, mood. yeah. And I know obviously, cause you've shown some of the cars that you have in Japan mm -hmm. and other places as well. You've got a little collection brewing of fun yeah, things yeah. waiting to bring them over. Yep. Um, this is my twin Supra that I'll be building to match the other car. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I don't know if you know much about Evos, but it's pretty cool. It's actually a TME RS, which is extremely rare. I wrapped it, the original red TME color scheme, because TME RSs only came in white. So the okay. TME RSs, most of which wound up just being track cars, because they're basically a stripper model. But they're much more rare and more desirable. Interesting. So how does that... So that was a different generation to the Tommy Mackinnon cars. No, that's what this is. That is what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I just but it's, guess... the, it's the RS trim, which okay. they didn't make very many of, and they were all white. Okay. That would, that would make sense. I have seen some of those before. But another like super expensive car, but this one actually had a roll cage in it and was a track car. Don't drive missing diff hardware. Definitely good, don't drive. Good to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, this one had a roll cage, so it was very, very cheap. It was mm -hmm. a cool way for me to own a car that I didn't think I'd ever own. That is fully stripped. That's yep. hardcore. We'll, uh, we'll end up redoing this car at some point. I want to sand the surface rust off the cage, paint it, make it pretty, and kind of like the other cars we have. I'm just looking around at what else is lurking. A couple of BMWs. That, uh, that E36 is actually pretty cool. That has the full Evo motor swap in it. So it's not an M3, but it has the Evo motor and drivetrain from ah. a proper Euro car. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's really cool. That's the only reason why I have it. Yeah, it makes sense. What's with the, the Mustang? Uh, that car, uh, believe it or not, burned down. It was originally a G350. Motor burned down. We wound up doing a, uh, an engine swap in it. I can't show you, but it's got a four liter inline six turbo Barra that uh, came over from Australia. It makes a thousand huh. horsepower, sequential <laughs> shifter. It's pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> this thing probably looks like the worst thing in here. This was actually my first car. Oh so really? I, yeah, I recently found it and bought it back. That's so epic. I love that. Yeah, and it's, it's not actually in terrible shape for an E46 that lived up in the salty north. So how long ago did you sell it? Uh, I sold this car in 2013. Okay, and you bought it back recently? Yeah. like last year. That's so cool. It's almost 10 years later. That's amazing. I, I, I can relate because I've been able to buy some of my older cars back. That's, that's like a really nice, really, really nice thing to have in there. And it's kind of a sleeper in a way because it still looks fairly stock, but underneath the hood, um, the guys over at Drift HQ just tossed in a uh, fully built S54 turbo. <laughs> so 
This thing, even though it looks like a basic E46, still makes over <laughs> 600 horsepower. And I mean, the kind of ride height and wheel setup gives it away a little, bit, yeah. but it's not so not so normal. But wow, I love the uh, the window trim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, that's actually TJ Hun's car. That's yeah. uh, my buddy Chris Rudnick's car. And then this is my kind of beater. This thing's been under some fences, off cliffs, you name it, crashed eight million times. <laughs> oh well. But have fun with it. Kind of what it's for. Mm -hmm. And then in here, this is mostly like other people's storage. So yeah. I charge a hundred bucks a month to friends, uh, people I know. Uh, one guy has uh, quite the collection of cars that are actually for sale and they're all just stored in here. Helps offset the cost of the property. Yeah, for sure. And some random goodies. This is a pretty cool individual color uh, E36. This is Duarte's from Drift HQ. It's actually right, yeah. a Japan spec car. Okay. Cool. His other E36, that one's got an S54. His <laughs> kids have these Zs that they drift, the BMWs up here. Yep. Um, and this is my girlfriend Colette's little collection over here. Lots of bright cars. Yeah, I, I'm a bright color person. I actually really love this. Yeah. It's a little lineup of everything around here. She's uh, been learning how to paint and this is like her first very legit car that she's done and it came out pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's actually awesome. Yeah, the, the whole fading stuff is definitely quite the challenge. But yeah, to get it right and to get it evenly across the car like this. And yeah. <laughs> the inside as well. It'll get a bunch of stickers and a cool livery on mm -hmm. it, but it hasn't gotten to that point yet. Nice. Um, what else do we have? GT350? Yep, so pretty much most of these cars back, these are uh, all cars that are for sale and there's some cool stuff, some M2s, a bunch of Audis, old E36, NSX. Can we pop through for a sec? Yeah. Love seeing all this kind of stuff. It's a nice E46 M3, couple of M2 comps. This one just popped up the other day. Sometimes I'll walk in here and there's a car that I haven't even seen before. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> this looks like this would be uh, a comp, yeah? Those are the competition exactly. wheels, right? I'm not versed well enough to be able to say. It looks nice though. Yeah. It I'm looks in the same boat. Nice. I don't know a lot about the uh, <laughs> E46 M3s. This is cool. What else? RS. Oh, and that was my, my original uh, R6 Avant. Mm -hmm. That's actually how I met the guy that's storing his cars here. This is like a cool German corner right now. Well, I'll throw in <laughs> yep. that up top, but the other cars around E92. Really nice. Cool stuff. While we head back, what's going on up there? Uh, that was just one of those weird kind of random ideas. All the, uh, the LS guys with their V8s, they always have turbos sticking out the hood. And I was like, you know what, why can't I do it with a Z? So we found a way to make it happen. And uh, that's actually how I met Johan, uh, my shop foreman, fabricator, and amazing magician behind pretty much all these builds that you see. He made the manifolds for that car and down the road wound <laughs> up uh, working with us. So it's cool. We have returned back to base and my car just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> bit crazy for that thing to be out here. So, should we go and see if something's ready? Yeah, yeah, the uh, <laughs> super should be good. Seatbelt should be about done and we'll, uh, we'll have some fun. It's time then. You ready? So this is, uh, this is a, a new build. This is a bone stock car with uh, a little tie rod adapter and a transmission controller. It's a HTG GCU that lets you sequentially shift and use a clutch pedal on an automatic gearbox. Clutch pedal on an automatic gearbox. It's a bit weird. Three pedals. Uh, hey, I'm not complaining. So we've got new seats, harnesses, and all sorts in here. All right, there's gonna be a whole lot of getting comfortable, making sure this is all safe and well, and then wish me luck. The gearbox, I can tell, is a little cold right now, so it's been a little weird with the shifts. So I think the next one will be a little bit better. This is ridiculous that you have this at your shop. It's pretty good in a stock form, the car, right? 
The car's pretty good. The place is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I it's mean, fun. You probably get normalized to this, but this is unreal. <laughs> like, this is so cool. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that this is their, like, dream. It's really fun. <laughs> what a place. Shall we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> in this thing this is a ridiculous car it works so well like this is just such a random idea oh we got ac on the whole time too <laughs> i'm not complaining <laughs> wow that's a great car <laughs> this is like the, the most i've driven the car yet so this is like really and i haven't had a proper passenger seat in it yet so you're the first okay well it feels good from the passenger seat good that's good to hear. i feel safe i feel comfortable Man, you got some skills. Thanks. That was smooth. It's fun going behind the house and everything, right? That's super smooth. That's really cool that you turn around the back. The uh, the diff on these is, is electrical, and sometimes it'll open up uh, in between drifts, like kind of in between. Yeah. So I have to drive this one a little bit more with the handbrake than I'd like. Yeah. But it just kind of keeps my confidence up there. <laughs> I'm glad you had fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. clutch kick a bit yeah I use it a little bit I don't need it a whole lot but it works well <laughs> you'll notice the uh, the shifting right now like you can change kind of the strategy it's a little aggressive for a street car yeah but for drifting when you're full tilt it works great but I mean what's the purpose of this car right it's fun a fun machine so it's built to do this it's built to misbehave with it's built to mess around a bit in an ideal world, we'll have this thing set up so it can be smooth going around town and at the track. It'll okay. be the perfect happy medium of a, a dailyable drift car. Cool. Dude. Have fun? Yeah. <laughs> that was mega. So cool. Disclaimer too, I just want to put it out there. <laughs> Suspension for this car hasn't arrived yet. That's why it looks like a monster truck. It, uh, it will be lower and will look a lot better. <laughs> it still looks pretty cool to me. And it swung around good for stock suspension, right? I mean, I'm, from my little passenger experience, yeah. it's pretty much perfect. It couldn't really do much more. Wow, what a place. Playground in your garden, like literally. <laughs>
that's already pretty cool, but what's up next? Uh, next, we we just finished that car actually, like today. Like you were the first passenger <laughs> to really ride in it. Oh, thank we'll you. be diving into the Mark IV Supras. So those builds I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. I kind of experienced it a little bit. My white chasers are telling you faster than the Turbo S. It was like my four-door Supra, but now I get to own a real Supra and I get to build one that yeah. someone will end up taking home. And uh, we've learned a lot in the Jay-Z platform. It's like what 90% of these cars are. Yeah. So. But it'll be interesting building two. Are you gonna do one and then finish it and then start the second or are you gonna kinda do them in parallel? Kinda both at the same time. My car is getting a pretty ridiculous engine and is gonna be well over a thousand horsepower. And then the one that we're giving away is gonna be a little bit more modest, like 750 horsepower. <laughs> Only. So, still very fast, <laughs> but just uh, keeping in mind that someone might own it that doesn't own or experience a lot of race cars. I'm trying to keep it a little bit more serviceable, a little simpler. So it doesn't have a crazy startup procedure. It doesn't have any crazy maintenance, simple. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's a thousand horsepower is a lot to handle. Did we even talk about the pizza? Oh, the yellow car? <laughs> we just we just filmed a little reel with it, so that's why it's got a pizza sign on it. <laughs> As you do. And, and you can also, see the uh, the concrete gets the cars real dirty. This is all concrete yeah. from rolling over on the sidewall. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that popped back while we were. Oh yeah, the green S15. That was another car we didn't talk about. Um, this one we were just testing today. I'm taking it to an event this weekend. So my buddy Trevor just came over and got it all cleaned up. So she's looking pretty. I think a dog wants to be in the video. I think so too. You were saying this is- This a is a neighbor's dog, but like far, far away. It, it just loves hanging out with a race car, so it, it finds its way <laughs> here all the time. Watch out, they might be drifting. Off yeah. he goes. <laughs> True, that's a good point. Dude, it's been awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Like, like I said, like to, to come visit, we've arranged this super spontaneously. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for coming out here. And thank you for the run in the Supra. Of course. What an epic thing. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Right on cue, the light is quickly going down, but what a stop on the GT Black Series Tour. To be here with Adam, to visit the compound, I've said it a few times, but this is genuinely every petrol head's paradise. This kind of setup, to have the warehouses, the storage, to have the cars and the space, the space to go and drift around. And there are so many other cars and things that you'll have to see over on Adam's channel if you aren't already following. What an awesome day though, to go out in his new A90 Supra, the new project, and to discover a little bit about that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed the day. Guys, do go follow Adam on various different channels if you aren't already. But what a day here at the Adam LZ compound, the LZ compound in Florida with this. Maybe we need to have some fun. I'm not sure. We'll see where the evening takes us. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.